Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating two different looks for you guys using the new Kaleidos and Angelica. I'm not sure if it's Angelica or, and or, I don't know. I just call her Angie. I mess up her name and I feel terrible every single time I do it. So I'm just going to leave it right here. She's a fellow friend and content creator here on YouTube. And if you're not following her, you definitely should, especially if you love more vibrant, colorful looks. She is so inspirational and she is such a sweetheart. And she has collaborated with Kaleidos. I mean, it's the perfect collaboration. You really could not have put a brand with a person any better than this collaboration. And look how beautiful it is. Club Nebula. It's a thicker palette. It's so pretty. Hold on. Let me open it up. I'm excited, you guys. This thing gives me the feels. When I looked at it, I thought of a million different looks I could do <laughs> with this palette. I just realized I'm wearing white. <laughs> I do this all the time. I'm like, don't touch this palette. Don't you do it because it's going to end up all over my hoodie. But um, look at these colors. They scream Angie to me. And I was so inspired when I opened this. And I think that you guys will be too especially after you guys see the swatches. I'm gonna show you guys everything. I'm gonna read some information off of the Kaleidos website. This is currently sold out, but it's coming back limited stock on February 17th. So make sure you set an alarm because you're gonna want this. You're gonna want this. You'll see, you'll see. It retails for $45 and the key features are multi-chromatic and texturally diverse. That is absolutely true. It's so one of the things that I love most about this is all the different textures that are in the palette and the way they play on the eyes. It's just absolutely magnificent. Ultra pigmented, easy blending, deep hued mattes, highly versatile and intuitive to use, soft and creamy yet highly adhesive, no creasing, vegan and cruelty free. Now I have worn this look, I've had this on for probably three hours. And then the look that I was wearing the other day, I didn't get to wear all day, but I can tell you that just from my experience with Kaleidos, I've never had any issues with their shadows fading, creasing or anything like that. And um, I'm, I'm really liking this. Like I said, very inspired by this palette. Now let me show you guys the swatches while I read to you what Angie has to say. This palette features a variety of different textures and a good ratio between mattes and shimmers. The color spectrum goes from really dark to really light with lots of options in what direction you might want to take an eye look. I also try to think of colors that would not only go good together, but would also go good together with other eyeshadows, not only in your collection, but for example, together with neutral colors too. My favorite eyeshadows ever are dark, jewel-colored matte colors, and I'm so happy this palette has several of those. I was inspired by the colors of Nebula, hence the name, and I would probably describe it as that as well. I did try to think of something that would fit into both my brand and the Kaleidos brand. Angie, you knocked it out of the park. Not only with the amazing color selection inside, like I said, it just screams her. I could look at this palette, not know that it was a collaboration with her and think of her, but the packaging as well. It's just so beautiful. It's luxe. It's, it's gorgeous. It's truly, truly gorgeous. And oh, the jewel tones, they get me. And I absolutely agree that you could take this palette and pair it with anything that you have in your collection, just to bump it up a little bit, but you can also create a plethora of looks using just this palette alone. With that being said, let's get into the two that I created. I'm gonna start off with a blue and green tone look, and then we'll move into this um, smoky, purpley, grayish something. I don't know, I was playing and I was having a lot of fun doing so. All right, starting now. Zoeva 227 in the shade 7 of 9. Placing this on the lower lid first in a tapping motion. Basically gonna cover about half of the lid. And then I'm gonna work up into the crease. And then as less product is on my brush, I'm gonna start going up even higher. I'm not gonna take this on the inner corner 
or inner portion of the crease because I'm going to add the green there. As you can see, the opposite eye is already done. I wanted to finish it off with the liner, mascara, and everything so you guys could see the finished look because I'm not going to finish this eye. I'm going in with a bit more just to build the shade up just a little bit. I love all the different blues and teals that are in this palette. They're really pretty. Next, I'm going to go in with Gravity on a Wayne Goss number 19. Placing this on the front portion of the crease. First, going in little back and forth windshield wiper motions lightly going into the last shade make sure I get further down into the crease here and then I'm going to go in small circular motions to blend I'm going to take the excess from my brush and go lightly into the last shade Back in with the 227, no additional product, and just making sure those merge together nicely. On a Bristles Beauty EO2 RL, I'm now going to go in with Queen of Blades. Tapping, again, outer corner. This shade reminds me of a better perfected version of Max Plummet. I used to love that shade so much, but then like, <laughs> as you start to use more shadows and whatnot, you kind of realize that there's better formulas, and this is just one that just makes me think of, yep, this is what MAC Plummet should have been. I'm going to start bringing this up. It's very pigmented. I'll wipe it off, wipe my brush off, <laughs> and then go in because this shade, I'm telling you, it's super, super pigmented, so you gotta be careful. Back in with the 227. Again, no additional product. Just getting a little bit more of an even blend on the outer corner, or outer crease action here. MAC 221 in the shade Void. I'm even further going to deepen up the outer V and the crease. This is the original 221 from MAC, so it's the natural hair version. If you don't have this one, uh, the refer number 14 or the number 19 from Wayne Goss. Or if you have a hooded eye, the mini booster from Sonia G. The shade Astro on a refer 21. I am packing this on first. It's like a packing motion. And then I'm going to start moving it along the lid. I'm using the shade Dry. And oh my god, it's so pretty. Tapping over the last shade. Going all the way up to the crease, but not passing. Like the shimmers in this palette, I just, uh, they're amazing. They are amazing. Now I'm going in with the MAC 242 in the shade Firefly. Placing this on the inner corner. This is essentially the same brush as the MAC 242, but... I'm mean, no, this is the MAC 242 as the Refer 21, but I'm using several different brushes because these are so pigmented 
that I don't want the, I just don't want them to mix on the brushes. Lightly blending into Astro. On another Refer 21, I'm going in with the shade Nova. I'm going to buff this underneath my brow arch and then into the, like the matte shades. And I'm just in love with this and the effect that it gives. It's like, I don't know. It has blue and purple and just like it, it shifts depending on what you put under it and I just I love it so much so I'm going a little bit over the mats as there's less product on my brush just so I have that that shift all over that area I'm going back in with void on a refer 23 I'm gonna stamp this right along the top lash line not going to the inner corner though going about three quarters of the way in For the lower lash line, I'm going in with Queen of Blades on a refer 3. On a new refer number three, I'm going in with Nova. I'm using this wet and I'm going to apply it to the inner portion of the, like the inner corner and the lower lash line, dragging slightly over Queen of Blades. Lastly, I'm taking Gravity on a Bristles Beauty PO6 RF and I'm stamping this into the lower waterline. This is not something that you have to do, but it's something that I like to do. If you are worried about it, I would go in with a liner instead. Second shade in the second row on a Zoeva 227. I'm going to start by tapping this on my outer corner. Actually, the whole outer half of my lid. <laughs> I love how I always say outer corner, but really, I mean the whole outer half. <laughs> and then I'm going to start working this shade upward. I really like this color, like a lot, a lot. This is going to be a shade that I would want as a single, <laughs> or I'm going to grab for this palette quite a bit, just because I like that it's gray, but it has this really soft purple undertone to it and it blends beautifully. Like I'm obsessed with this shade. I'm bringing it upward into the transition, closer to the brow, not gonna bring it all the way in, but I will have a little fun over here. I'm gonna take the excess, but I'm gonna pick up some more whenever I do that because I don't have a lot, as you can see, left on my brush. I'm just kind of blending upward, moving what is on my eye upward. I'm going right here. This is something you do not have to do. The eye look will look beautiful without this, but I want it just, the, this palette is inspiring to me. When I look at it, I am inspired. That does not always happen. I just think, I wanted to do something a little bit more fun. And I love to put color on the outer corner, outer portion of the eye like this and add it right here. Plus it makes the bridge of your nose look a little smaller. Same color on a Wayne Goss number no. five, little pencil brush. I'm gonna work that right along the lower lash line. Rock Hopper on a Wayne Goss number 18. I'm gonna add some depth to the outer corner. Bringing it up into the crease as well. A lot of pigment with these shades, so be careful. I'm gonna start lightly bringing this shade upward. And I did wipe off my brush actually just now. <laughs> 
because I didn't want to have too much on the brush as I start working it upward. Excess, inner corner, it's not inner corner, what, the bridge of the nose, the side of the bridge of the nose, I, I don't know, I don't know. Back in with the 227, just to blend out the edges. Also going to go right in here. I'm going to take that shade again, Wayne Goss number 5, working it along the lower lash line. Red Giant on a MAC 221. I'm going to start packing this right on the outer corner. And this time I actually mean it. <laughs> I'm not going all over the lid like I did with the last shades, but I am going to take this up into the crease and I'm actually going to add a little bit more of this after I add on the lid shade. I started coughing and my eyes teared up, so now I'm a little sensitive. I think I'm having a little bit of an issue right here because my outer corner of my eye is a little wet. And no, I'm not sick. It's just cold outside. <laughs> Bring this up into the crease. Softening that up again with the 227. Refer number 21 in the shade Nebula. I'm going to start packing this on the lid. This one's a little thinner than like the blue that I used yesterday. So I have to pack this one on just a little bit more. But I am not mad at it. I'm going over the last shade, going up into the crease, just kind of melting this in. And if you wanted this to be more intense, you could go in with it wet. Back in with Red Giant on the MAC 221. I'm going to start tapping that on the outer corner again. I want to kind of blend over and into Nebula, into the crease. I'm going to take the excess from my brush, go on the inner portion right here. Dust away the tiny little bit of fallout. The Wave of 227, no additional product. Just blending out to that inner portion. You're my only hope on a Lunar Beauty E7. Placing this on the inner corner and I am going to drag it over. This is what softens the look up a little bit. I want those to merge. Taking a little bit of that on my lower lash line on the inner corner. And then just the excess from my brush, I'm going to work onto my brow arch. This looks like glass. So this is a shade that is a little, like it's a little crumbly, but when you work it into the skin, it looks like glass. You can wear it more sheerly like this and it's so beautiful or pack it on or again you can use it wet. It's very versatile and I think it's it's really cool. I like it. On a refer number three I'm taking the last shade in the second row and I'm going to place this right up against my lashes on the top and then I'm going to go add on a liner and mascara. As I'm sure you guys could see the mattes are incredibly pigmented, they blend, and they layer beautifully. That's something that I always look for. Is I do not like it when you have these beautiful shades, but then they don't layer on top of each other very well. I didn't have any issues with that with this palette. And there are different textures. If you're looking at the different shimmers, again, I'm not going to touch these because <laughs> I don't want them to end up on my sweater. But like this one right here is a lot more intense just straight out the gate. This one is kind of mid, like right in between. And then these here, they kind of have like this fairy dust type of feel to them. So they can be more opaque, especially if you pack them on or use them wet. But then if you use them sheerly, 
they give the eye just this gorgeous, gorgeous texture. You will get a little bit of fallout, but nothing that's going to ruin your makeup. And if you're worried about that, I would just do your face makeup afterwards. Anywho, I love this. Absolutely love this. This is definitely one of my favorites that I have used from Kaleidos and I have several of their palettes. I'm not new to Kaleidos. But anywho, congratulations, Angie. I am so, so proud of you. And again, you couldn't have done a better job. It's beautiful. It's truly beautiful. Anywho, beauties, I hope you guys enjoyed the looks. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know which one was your favorite down below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.